Hey gunfighters, gonna try something a little bit new. It's September, which means a lot of people either are or are getting ready for hunting season. I thought it'd be pretty cool this coming Friday to put out several episodes on several popular hunting cartridges. Not exclusively hunting, so even if you're not into hunting but a ballistics nerd like myself, you may enjoy this Friday quite a bit. If you like this, let me know. Maybe we'll do something like it in the future. But I plan on putting out several episodes on different specific calibers this Friday. This should probably be the intro. Hopefully you enjoy it. With that, have a restful Sabbath and a blessed weekend. What is going on, gunfighters? Just a random recast today. I already put out one episode, a new episode today. But I was going through old episodes and I thought you guys might like this one. The Mighty Mouse, the 243. I consider this round as close to deer slaying perfection as there is. I really like the 243. I think it's often underestimated and underrated. So if you kind of write off the 243, perhaps be circumspect and consider this episode, men. Especially if you're looking for that go-to deer medium-sized game rifle for this year's season or for many future seasons. Just because there's a bunch of new cartridges, that doesn't make them better than a 243. With that, I'm going to upload this episode, a recast. Don't forget to check out goodshepherdtraining.com. If you ever think, hey, this guy should do videos and shooting instruction and things like that, well, I do do that. You can go to goodshepherdtraining.com and click the Patreon link. Most of that is for patrons. You can become a patron, but some of that is for everybody. You can just click on there and watch it. Anyway, with that, I'll plug in the episode. Hopefully you enjoy. Thanks. Have a blessed day. Hello. Welcome back to Gunfighter Life. As always, I am your host, Michael Melito. A little bit about me. First and foremost, I am a Christian. I make no apologies for that. That comes out in everything that I do, and this podcast will be no different. I started uh, this podcast. I wanted the gun community to get some real-world perspective in it. I know that a lot of opinions and things are floating around out there, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I certainly have my own biases, but hopefully they're rooted in some real-world experience. I started shooting at a very early age. Some of my earliest memories are hunting and shooting did my first formal shooting competitions even before I was old enough to join the Marine Corps. And I joined the Marine Corps at 17. So I started competing at a very early age. Um, I've won more competition shooting events than I can remember. Uh, State rifle and pistol champion a few times over. I've competed in everything from precision rifle to action pistol and steel challenge. If you don't know what those are, don't worry about it. Um, I grew up, like I said, hunting and shooting at a very early age. I've been very blessed to hunt all over this beautiful country, everything from whitetail on the east coast to mule deer on the west coast, and elk and bear and wolf and all manner of things, all manner of beasts that roam the earth I've been able to take and hunt and have dominion over, and I'm very blessed for that. I joined the Marine Corps at 17 where I did several combat tours. After my combat tours, I was an urban warfare instructor for the Marine Corps, where I taught urban warfare and desert warfare. After my time in the Marine Corps was up, I went to work for law enforcement. I worked for LAPD. I worked patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. I also served in the U.S. Army full-time and part-time National Guard. In addition to that, I've been a private contractor. I was a commander of an SRT team, a special response team for a fairly large metropolitan area in the United States. I won't get into any more detail about that. Um, I'm a shooting instructor. I've been been a professional shooting instructor for a long time. I'm an FBI certified firearms instructor, NRA certified. I taught at the one of the largest private schools for shooting in the country and probably the world by that measure. And I've done that. And I'm certified in a bunch of other three-letter government agencies that I don't care to mention. I've been a professional hunter and guide now. I gave up my big city career as an SRT commander 
to come out in the country because I miss the country and hunting and shooting and teaching people how to shoot. And I am a professional hunter and guide. So not many people in today's day and age can, can say they professionally hunt buffalo and elk and things as a guide. But I'm very blessed to be able to do that. So that's a little bit about my background and experience. Today, our topic is going to be the 243 as a cartridge. A little bit about the history of the 243 as we get into today's topic. So the 308, we can't talk about one without the other because the parent case of the 243 is the 308. Now the 308 came about in the early 1950s. I'm not exactly sure when it saw military adoption, but it came out as a commercial cartridge in the early 1950s. And by 1955, somebody had already decided to what they call neck it down. So they took the 30 caliber .308 inch bullet and put in a .243 or 6 millimeter bullet. And that gave it, that gave it um, as far as ballistics go, a lighter, faster bullet. So think about it simply this way if you're not big into ballistics nerds and calculation stuff like I am you take a 308 and you put a smaller bullet in there with the same amount of powder give or take which makes it go faster so you have a lighter faster bullet generally they're talking anywhere from 55 grains to 100 grains I know you can get probably some lighter and some heavier and you can hand load which I've done plenty of and And this or that. But generally you're talking a 55 grain bullet to a 100 grain bullet. It's pretty typical for a 243. So it came out I believe in 1955 in the model Winchester Model 70. Verify that for yourself. Um, But I believe that's correct. 1955 commercial adoption. So it's been around a while. And it's pretty popular. And it's pretty popular as like a woman's and a youth's cartridge. And I'm here to tell you why maybe that's not the best reputation for it. It's good at a lot of things, but it's it's kind of known for that like youth rifle, somebody's first rifle, a 243. Great Whiskey Meyer song if you want to look that up. My first rifle was a 243. Um great song. But anyway, it is a lot of people's very first deer hunting cartridge for for good reason. I guess nowadays a lot of people are getting the deer hunting with a 223, but 243 I would say is definitely a great choice for your first deer rifle. But why it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a choice for that. So what is a 243 great at? Well, it's got a pretty wide range of bullets. Like I said, in that 55 grain, that lighter end of the spectrum, it is a great varmint cartridge. It is great on varmints. It's great on coyotes. Um, it's great on anything from like woodchuck, rock chuck size stuff to the coyotes and that 55 grain bullet it's great for that you step up to a little bit heavier bullets you know the 75 grain would be kind of by me my minimum recommendation for deer um 75 grain to really good choice to 85 grain up to the 100 grain so those are great solid the 75 grain 85 grain 100 uh, grain soft point bullets are great for Deer. Deer size medium game, I think, is where the 243 really shines. And not just for the beginner, for anybody. It is a great medium, light skinned game. We're talking white tailed deer, mule deer, black tailed deer, um, you know, anything like that. It is great for that. And you can take larger game. I'll get into my experience with the 243 a little bit later. We'll save that. But you can take larger game, but it really excels at the white tailed deer. And it really excels. It's a good long range performer, but it really excels in like a nice lightweight handy rifle with your traditional powered optics with taking shots anywhere from, you know, close in 25, 50 yards out to 300, 350 yards. And I know you can you can hunt farther than that, but like I said, I'm a professional hunter and guide and I like spot and stalk hunting and I have taken animals further than 300 yards, but I generally don't. I generally like to spot and stalk up closer to my animals and get within 300 yards of them and ethically take them and give them, you know, fair chase and let them know that I'm, give their senses the ability to at least detect me so I'm doing something. Um, Anyway, that's just the way that I hunt. That's not the way that you have to hunt. Let's welcome all kinds of hunters here. But it definitely has good long range ballistics, especially with the heavier bullets. But it's a great cartridge for deer sized game inside of 350 yards it is great for that and it's also great for varmints and 
a great thing about the 243, which I really like about it, it's a lot of fun to shoot. It doesn't have a lot of recoil, and you can get amped well. We're in the ammo apocalypse right now of 2020 slash 2021. I don't know when you're going to listen to this, but uh, normally, <laughs> in any but the craziest of times, 243 ammo is pretty available and it's affordable most of the time. And that makes it great to hunt and shoot with. And I'll tell you as a professional guide, I'd rather you guiding somebody on a hunt and rather them come to me with a 243 that they practice with all the time than, you know, let's go crazy and say like a 400 Nitro Express, which is a giant round that they shoot once and they can't shoot anymore because they don't practice with it because it's got a ton of recoil and it's too expensive. So I'd rather have you with a 243 that you can practice with. So it's it it hits that mark. It checks that box. It's affordable ammo. It's fun to shoot. Um, and it's great for youth shooters, for women shooters, but it's also great for expert shooters. So I'll get into a little bit about my experience with the 243. Um, I don't live in Idaho anymore, but I lived in Idaho for a long time. It's a great state. It's probably my favorite state. I've lived all over the state of Idaho. I've hunted all over the state of Idaho. Um... And I love the 243. And I had bigger, you know, what I guess you would consider more powerful rifles. But when it came time to hunt, I would take, I, w- I went to Walmart and bought a 243 Remington 700 youth model because it was super light and super handy. Um, and I hunted everything with that in. I can't say everything. I never took like a moose or anything because I never drew a tag. But I took several elk. I took a wolf. I took more deer than I can recall with a 243. It was light. It was handy. And I would hike up and down those mountains all day. And if you've ever been to Idaho and seen like the Sawtooth Mountains and the Sawtooth Wilderness and known the vast expanses of that, you could see where a light handy rifle would come in handy. And I still hunt with a 243. I still take it out. It still is with me around the ranch here where I professionally guide. It's great for coyotes. It's great for taking out deer that get injured or wounded or or have their back ends pulled out by coyotes or whatever. It's a great all-around gun. Um, That 243 um, is what, when I took my wife out for her first sheep hunt, um, I have a lot of really nice rifles. You know what I grabbed for her and had her practice with and had her take out on her first sheep hunt? I had her take out the uh, 243 Remington 700 youth model. It's light. It's handy. It doesn't have a ton of recoil. It's a blast to shoot. It's great. So that's a little bit about me and my experience with the 243. Like I said, I've, I've taken elk with a 243. I would not recommend that. It's not like I would never say that that's like the best elk cartridge by far. I'd also say if you're going to do that, it's an expert's round for elk. You need to be even closer than 300 yards and you need to be you really need to pick your shots i gave up quite a few elk because they just didn't present a perfect shot And with a 243 i want like a good a good quartering to me neck shot or a good quartering away where i can get in between the rib cage and really do some massive damage um inside that elk chest cavity and i know with that being done that elk will go down um but i would not recommend that for like a go-to elk cartridge but I would recommend it for an awesome go-to deer cartridge, especially if you're in somewhere with a little bit more wide open area. If you're hunting east of the Mississippi and you're hunting a piece of land where your longest shot is, you know, 50 yards, 75 yards, which is not uncommon in the east with all the briars and brambles and everything, um, then you may be better served with like a 3030 or a 35 Remington or something like that. But if you're anywhere where you might get a shot out to 200, 300 yards on deer size game, 243 is amazing. It's an amazing cartridge. My favorite load for that, I hand loaded for it for years, um, is a, I won't give any specific load data because you need to consult a reloading manual for that if you're going to reload, but 85 grain Sierra Game King. I've taken a lot of game with that 85 grain Syria Game King loaded on top of a charge of Varget and a 243. Um, that's a great load. You know, I don't even load it to max. I load it a little bit under max, but it is just dynamite on deer size game. So that 85 grain Sierra Game King, the 100 grain soft points, um, those I'd really take a look at. I like the 100 grain soft points by Federal, and that really depends more on your rifle. 
whatever your rifle likes. My rifle liked those 85 grains here at Game Kings. Um, it also likes the 100 grain Federals, but any kind of like 100 grain soft point, the Remington Core Locks, be a pretty standard deer load. Like I said, your Federal soft points would be a good um, a good go to deer round. Whatever the Winchester, you know, white box, you know, 100 grain soft points. Like I said, affordable. Any of those brands or any of those bullets are pretty established as taking deer. If you don't take a deer size game with a 243 inside of 300 yards, it's not the cartridge's fault. It's something that you probably did wrong. Um, so that cartridge will perform on that application. Thanks for listening. Have a blessed day.